So I'm going to show you a little of my artwork. It's difficult to not live in Clark Ashton Smith territory without being influenced by the bane foul ichor that seeps up from these fetid hills of blood and gold and all things fantastical and weird. So I'll just show you a couple of uh, <laughs> paintings right. I've done out here. This is a street of lost dreams. It's kind of a twisted European landscape out of Prague. I'd like the idea that it would give the viewer a feeling of disorientation and drunkenness. You're in this kind of haunted, dark, grim fairy tale realm. I'd like to live here. This is called Death's Head Moth Lady. So we have a beautiful Victorian Gibson girl. Well, I think she's beautiful. And she's fused onto the body of a moth. That's one of my favorite colors is that lime absinthe green. It's tricky to decide to keep your color palette limited to sepia and green. And there you go. I painted that when I was living in New York City. It expresses my experience of riding on the subway. <laughs> and uh, I later would find that this was a very similar theme to illustrations by Kubin and many artists. That meaning a demonic hell mouth. It even goes back to the Middle Ages. A mouth of hell from which poor lost souls are being disengorged and vomited. So it's an ancient subject. It gave me incredible peace of mind to paint this because once I started it, I, I didn't worry as much about the outside world because I had hundreds of dark, twisted, haunted, puppet-like little automaton faces to paint. <laughs> And it's bracketed by the sun and the moon. I still have yet to finish it. This is called She Wears a Hat of Horns. Again, this Victorian woman with her fan in a scarlet velvet dress is wearing a hat or maybe, probably, she's a hideous human creature hybrid and these maggot-like larval horns and forms are sprouting out of her head and they're segmented and yet they are beautiful because they're dotted with Swarovski crystals crystals which I've actually inset so even if the artwork isn't worth a cent technically this must be worth at least $15 in in jewels which I've inset in there this is a haunted landscape I know I painted something in the area. When you live in the foothills, you can't help but feel nature all around you. To the extent where it's even creeping past my frame. I think since I was a child, there's nothing I love more than drawing trees. And yet for me, they must be without leaves. They must be bare, skeletal, withered tortured, silhouetted, semi-human. <laughs> this is called Shadow Barge of the Caliph. It's kind of an Arabian Nights theme. There's this weird ship. It's a barge. The head of it, the, the prow of the ship, is clearly a seahorse. The ship is oared by these mysterious sort of Middle Eastern men. Perhaps it's Marrakesh. Probably a more fantastic world they live in. This is one of my greatest treasures. I found it locally in a thrift shop. There were initials. It almost looked like it said C-A. I, I can't believe that this thing exists. 
it almost looks like there was a Weird Tales or Lovecraft fan in the 1930s who did this really primitive work. You can see it's a fishing village in Canada, the Pacific Northwest. They're a bit I'm completely lying. I just made all of that up. I'm sorry if I wet your appetite, folks. Uh, this is a thrift store painting I found. I added the tentacles. I wanted it to look like a primitive painting I found depicting a kind of Lovecraftian scene of a tentacled sea creature attacking a little fishing village somewhere. And I never quite finished it, and I think I'm going to leave it this way. I think it's pretty authentic looking. In fact, this is just for your benefit. There. <laughs> now it's finished. Now it's, now it's, you gotta, uh, there. now it's ready. <laughs> this is a depiction of an ancient, ancient Greco-Roman god, and it's about time that he came back and was worshipped. I'm very serious. My, his name is Chinubis, somewhat akin to Abraxas. I'm wearing a finger ring of Chinubis. He had a lion's head and a serpent's body. He was representative of uh, the sun, the solar, the lion, the lofty, the risen, the light, the serpent, the lower, the base, the foul, the stinking, and the mundane. Carl Jung actually wore a ring of this creature because it represented the best and worst of humanity. In one image. This is a slightly Carrington-esque image of... Oh, this was called gentrification. These weird guys heading to this place. <laughs> and the second part of gentrification oh, is here. See? Oops. You can see it goes together. <laughs> this is probably a self-portrait. It's a dark magician, weird writer, collector fellow. It's really who we all want to be, which is a pretty creepy fellow <laughs> in his library. <laughs> and there's a hand of glory or some kind of spooky thing there. He's got stuff on his bookshelves. Kind of reminds me of a couple of people I know. <laughs> this painting is called The King in Yellow. <laughs> It's actually stolen from a 19th century theatrical amusement book. This was an actual costume that you could make called the Flexible Giant, using hoops and a rod. So this was an old theatrical costume. Mm. Strangely, I painted this painting at least nine times and sold it over and over. People loved this image. Wow. So, you give them what they want. <laughs> and if we're just about done, we'll show you one or two more. Okay. This is rather smithy in. <laughs> there. But here we have some sort of a planet or orb or vast source of life and nutrient and all kinds of strange creatures and weird hybrid beasts and they're all gravitating toward this cosmic you get the idea. At some point I discovered that this was a phenomenon, that these uh -huh. four-eyed guys existed, and this was a thing, and they were collectibles in America. Kutcher belly aching. What I love about it is that he represents a drunk guy. He's drunk. 
right? When you're drunk, hoo hoo, you're seeing double. What's amazing about it is that when you're drunk, you see double, correct? Yeah. Your vision is blurred, and that's what happens. But in this case, it is the drunk who is being perceived from the opposite point of view. So instead of seeing double, it's the drunk who has double eyes. <laughs> in fact, if you see right here, you can see these. this only has two eyes, right? There are only two eyes. Have you been drinking? Have you? Now come on, you know. Now wait a minute, now wait a minute. Now somebody's been drinking. <laughs> the idea was that you yeah, would have yeah. this two-eyed yeah. and your friends would be there early in the evening. Uh -huh. And this was what they would tell you to do. Give them a, <laughs> give them a few drinks. Uh -huh. Point out, look at that funny thing I bought. Look at that. And then switch it and later in the night, what the? <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.